Yes, you can get rid of pesticides from your fruit and veggies when you wash them. There is no doubt about it. There's more than 20 studies in 2023 highlighting that you can get rid of it. You can dramatically reduce the levels of pesticides. And yes, there are pesticides in all of the fruit and veggies that are bought through a normal commercial um, uh, retail stores and so on. So we want to get rid of these. And the research shows that, first of all, putting them in water only reduces the pesticide levels a little bit. Then when you add a little bit of salt, that helps with just a little bit, a few percent. But the real winner in all of this is sodium bicarb. No doubt it's very, very cheap, very, very easy to come by. You get it at the supermarket. Um, you basically, it, the research shows that you get a, a full tablespoon, uh, something like this, put it in there, mix it in with water. And as I'll, again, I'll show you in a moment, the longer you leave it, the better it is. And you can get up to a, somewhere between about 20 and 80 or even 90% reduction in the pesticides, depending on how long uh, the type of fruit and a whole raft of things in there. But it does work, the studies show that. Now, on the second level, it also shows that vinegar is also very effective, not at the same time because that creates an acid alkali, little volcano bubbling match there, but vinegar is also very effective. The difference is sodium bicarb is a lot cheaper, a lot easier, a lot more convenient, but they both give you about the same results. And to be effective in there, I need about three quarters or a half a cup of vinegar, strong double strength vinegar mixed in with that water. And of course, the longer you leave it, the better it is. And other simple strategies like warming warm water, which isn't going to work on my green veggies, but it will work on some apples and other things that they're not going to ruin it. Warm water improves it. And of course, a lot of agitation and so on works as well. The studies clearly show that you can remove pesticides from foods that you're going to eat. And the ideal scenario is you do want to. I wrote a paper about that 30 years ago, published in, in a book on pesticide contamination and so on. And it was all about the fact that we are getting exposed to pesticides and they do have health effects. I will do another video on that one. But we find that from the least effective to the most effective, we've got water rinsing, not very great, but it is good for uh, the rough surface foods like spinach and silver beet and perhaps kale and where you can get the water in and rinse it off and it's got little cracks and crannies where dust particles which hold on to some of the pesticides can be locked into. Sodium chloride wasn't very effective, table salt a little bit up to about two to five percent or something. Ozone uh, also not effective. Boron, boric acid was shown to be a little bit effective uh, and then we get down to a plant-based surfactant which is just a plant-based soap. So it can help with any of the oil soluble uh, pesticides. It's probably okay. Some of the companies out there are saying theirs is really good, but probably a little bit too expensive compared to acetic acid, which is more effective. So acetic acid, which is just vinegar, and you get the double strength vinegar, and you get sodium bicarb. And these two show up pretty well the same, depending on the different type of pesticides. Some were able to remove some pesticides, and the other one were able to remove other pesticides. So you can't really say which one's better. However, I do prefer um, I use sodium bicarbonate a little bit more because it's easy, it's cost effective. You buy a little box for $3 and it'll last you a long time. Put that teaspoon in as I showed you already in the video. Now, it removes up to 70 to 80% of the pesticides and uh, 10 to 15 minutes soaking. The longer you soak it, the better. Now, if you're in a rush, don't worry. Two to three minutes, you're still going to remove a lot of the pesticide. So the longer you can, the better, but if you only got a minute or two, still do it with the sodium bicarb or, or the vinegar. And that's the most effective way of literally getting rid of the pesticides. Now, other things can increase the, um, uh, get the elimination of them. And one is ultrasound. And these are little devices you can put in the water and goes, and it shakes it around. And it, that's effective because it helps the water and, uh, and, and whatever you're using to get into the little places, but also to shake off any particles that have it. Uh, warm water, would I recommend them? Not really. Warm water, as I've already mentioned, is, is effective. The warmer the water, the higher the level of chemical reactions, the higher the effectiveness of the sodium bicarb and the uh, acetic acid. So two strategies. Now the studies, and there's a whole lot of other studies, show that any of these processes, cooking, boiling, steaming, pickling and fermenting, also dramatically reduce pesticide exposure. So they dramatically reduce the amount of pesticides on the food. So if you go down to some fermenting and pickling, you're going to reduce it to 70, 80, even more percent, steaming, boiling up to 100% and cooking absolutely between 50 and 100% for all of these things. So very effective. 
Uh, but of course, I eat a lot of raw, so I try to get my own veggies and I do so the veggies that I am going to eat. Uh, why is there so much difference in it? Well, it's primarily linked to the fact that there are different pesticides. Pesticides is an all-encompassing, let's get rid of all pests, okay? And I, I wrote, as I said, this already. I wrote a paper on this some 30 years ago. I did my a whole year's study on pesticides in homes and around homes. Uh, when I, in the back of the days when I, I was studying, I published a couple of um, scientific journal articles on pesticides and pesticide exposure, including in eggs and in water and other areas. So we've got herbicides. They're designed to kill herbs, the weeds, and that's typically things like glyphosate, Roundup. Uh, and I'll, there's a video on that very soon. Insecticides, these are the ones that kill the uh, insects uh, and fungicides. And these are probably the biggest concern. Uh, they tend to hang around about the same. We've got what's called half-life. Half-life is when you've, let's say, got two amounts of pesticide and over four to nine days, you've only got half left. And it varies depending on the type of pesticide. But the fungicides are often the ones that are put on late in the piece, so just before harvest or just at harvest, and so the ones you're more likely to be exposed to, they're the ones we are more concerned about. And then it goes down to why is there so much variation, apart from the fact that you've got you know, different types of pesticides, and some of them can be pesticides that can hang around for 10 years, in fact, while others can break down really, really quickly. And they've also got dust particles attached to the foods, which can be holding on to some of the pesticides. You get some pesticides that are water soluble, so they're more likely to be able to be rinsed off, to be soaked off very quickly. You know, systemic pesticides, which can go into the foods themselves, uh, they're often used on um, a big, thick, peely things like oranges and so on. And then you've also got the physical, chemical and biological way of breaking things down. And what we're after here is the physical, the chemical, and in the future, we'll be relying on biological. But what they show in biological, and this will be about 10, 20 years time, um, they can use probiotics to actually break down the pesticides and it happens in nature, it happens in the soil and we already see it happening in fermenting cheeses and fermenting dairy and things like that. The pesticides are broken down very effectively and up to 100% in some cases. So biological breaking down, probiotics and fermentation. And there's also a big variation simply because of the roughness of the surface of the foods. If you've got something smooth, it's much easier for the chemical reactions with the sodium bicarbonate or the vinegar to get in there and do it. If it's rough, uh, not so. So it makes a big difference there. So we've got the ways to do it. We've got the reasons. And now you can be full bottle on exactly what this means when people say, oh, you can't remove pesticides by washing. Well, you know you can. There's over 100 studies clearly stating that you can. Uh, if you like this information, subscribe below and share it with your friends.